Hey, it's Nick back with another beginner to intermediate level Photoshop tutorial. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to create pixel art using Adobe Photoshop. And uh, we're going to go through the basic creation as well as a couple of really useful tips and tricks that are going to make your life a lot easier when it comes to making pixel art. Now, chances are, if you clicked on this video, you probably already know what pixel art is. But just in case you're unsure of what I'm talking about, let's take a look at a couple of examples of what pixel art looks like. So you can see here, I've got one, and I just whipped these up pretty quick. Uh, there's one of me on top of a pile of 8-bit uh, skulls, which is, you know, nothing too out of the ordinary, and also, you know, one of the uh, USS Enterprise from the original uh, Star Trek series. So these were made pretty quickly using Photoshop, and, um, you know, you can kind of see that, you know, pixel art should look very familiar to you. It definitely has its roots in kind of the uh, classic or retro video gaming. You look at it, you kind of immediately think of, things like Ataris or old Nintendos, and that's really where the roots of pixel art are. And now, of course, it's back in a big way. It's very popular to uh, create pixel art, and um, Cappy, really probably one of the most famous ones, created an absolutely beautiful game called Sword and Sorcery, which you know I would probably consider to be kind of the pinnacle of pixel art and what it should really be. If you haven't checked that game out, please do. It is just an awesome example of what pixel art uh, can and ideally should look like. So the great thing about pixel art is that it is easy to actually jump in and start creating. Now, of course, with anything, it's easy to start creating, but it's difficult to master. So it's going to take you a lot of time, a lot of practice to, you know, really be able to um, create something, you know, beautiful using these techniques. But step number one, we're going to make a new canvas. And whenever you're making pixel art, your canvas, you actually want it to be really small. So we're going to go up to File New in Photoshop. And we want to make sure that the um, document is set to pixels instead of inches. And I'm going to set the resolution to 72, which is screen resolution. And I'm going to uh, set the width to actually something really small. We're actually going to only do 50 pixels by 50 pixels. Now, one of the things I'm going to show you how to do throughout the course of this video is how to resize um, any kind of pixel art you make and um, actually keep it looking nice and crisp and, you know, basically keep it looking exactly the way pixel art should, which is very geometric and blocky. So you're going to be able to resize it to fit inside any canvas. So that means you're going to be able to make pixel art prints, put them inside any kind of animated movie, or just make some cool graphics for your computer. Once we uh, set our canvas size to 50 pixels by 50 pixels, go ahead and click OK. And it's going to create our canvas. And of course, it's going to look like a very, very tiny little white box, which is only 50 pixels wide and 50 pixels tall. What I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and zoom in until it takes up the majority of my screen. Oop, I went a little too far. Just zoom back out. There we go. That looks pretty good. So technically, we could just jump in and start painting right now, but we're going to do a couple things that make Photoshop just a little bit more conducive to pixel art. And the first one is setting up our grid. To do this, and what we're basically doing is um, if you've ever drawn on graph paper, we're actually going to turn our canvas into something very similar. Inside Photoshop, go up to View, and we want to select Show, and then turn on something called the Grid. And yours may look a little bit different, possibly, and you can kind of see here that this definitely does not look right. And what's happening now is the grid is actually just set to uh, increments that are a little bit too large. What we want to turn this into is basically kind of graph paper and that each little square is the size of one single pixel. So to do that, in Photoshop, go up to Photoshop, Preferences, and then we have an option here that says Guides, Grid, and Slices. That's what we want to go into. There we go. So this section right here where it says Grid, and currently mine is set to a really horrendous green, um, we want to check that, or change that so that it says Grid Line Every One, and we want to change that to Pixels. And you can actually see it change automatically in the background. Now, the color of your grid is completely up to you. Um, to be honest, I usually like the light gray because it's uh, not nearly as distracting as any of the other colors. All right. So we set the grid to light gray and made sure that it's set to one per pixel. And we can kind of see, again, this looks very similar to graph paper. Each one of these little squares is an individual pixel. And if you look again at what pixel art looks like, Essentially, what we're going to be doing is kind of filling in our characters or anything that we're drawing basically block by block. We've got our grid set up. 
And you don't necessarily need to do this at this point. You could have done it earlier as soon as we open the canvas. I always like to work in full screen mode. So I'm going to hit the F key and that's going to enlarge Photoshop so it takes up my entire screen. And I should actually now be able to, using the zoom tool, which you can always access by uh, just clicking Z on your keyboard, or if you're lucky enough to have a uh, MacBook or a laptop, you can just pinch and zoom. I just want to uh, enlarge this a little bit so that it takes up pretty much my entire screen. And now with pixel art, it's also usually a good idea to work out the um, combination of colors that you want to use for whatever it is that you're creating. It could be something as simple as a character or really anything else. What I usually like to do anytime I'm going to be working out uh, colors is to create a series of swatches. And to do that, one easy way is simply to open up the color picker, which is at the bottom of the toolbar, and create a series of colors. Find one color that you might want to use, click the Add to Swatches button, and then that color is automatically going to be saved up at the top right inside the Swatches panel, which means you can access it anytime just by clicking on it. Another option that's really nice is if you haven't used this already, it's a really great resource for uh, for designers or you know really for anybody, even if you're just doing some fun pixel art. And that is Adobe's website called Cooler, uh, which I would recommend checking it out. It's uh, I believe it's Cooler K U L E R dot Adobe dot com, and it's a big color library that actually lets you download swatches, which are combinations of color. This can not only save time, but uh, more importantly, it actually lets you see those color combinations all together, those colors you know side by side. So you can start to pick out a color pattern or a combination of colors that's going to work for whatever it is you're doing. Now just to show you what that looks like really quick, I'm not going to get into it too much. Again, it's cooler, K-U-L-E-R dot Adobe dot com. You do need to have an Adobe ID to download these, although you can actually sample the colors uh, one by one and bring them into Photoshop without that. But an Adobe ID is free. I'd really recommend signing up for it because it gives you access to a lot of cool things such as this. So you can see we've got all these different combinations of colors, and this can make things a little bit easier for someone who's relatively new to design to start picking out combinations of colors uh, for use in their pixel art or anything else. So let's go back to Photoshop. And what I would do right now is go ahead and pause the video and pick out a series of maybe five colors that you think look nice together. You can use Cooler, you can do it manually, and save those inside your swatches panel up here at the top right. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So I've got a couple of colors picked out. I've got uh, one that could possibly work nicely as a uh, you know skin tone or a flesh tone, as well as some other colors that may work well for things like clothing or anything else. So now that we've got our grid set up and we also have our colors picked out, it's not uh, now time to start actually painting or creating this character. Step number one, anytime you're gonna be painting in Photoshop, it's always good to make a new layer. So click the new layer button, which is right to the left of the trash can icon at the bottom right. And basically what that's going to let us do is once we start creating this character, we're going to be able to move it all over the canvas if we need to. It's not going to be stuck or tied to the background. So now we're ready to paint. And to, uh, when it comes to pixel art, you're really just going to be using two tools, and that's about it. We actually don't want to use the brush tool, even though we're going to be painting, because the brush tool is actually a more of a perfect circle and has soft edges. And even when it's set to a hard edge brush, it's still going to be more of an actual circle, kind of like that. And when it comes to pixel art, we want those really hard, uh, pristine edges. And we can see that that looks a little bit blurry. So what I'm going to do is instead of the brush tool, we're going to use, by clicking and holding on the brush tool, the pencil tool. And it may look like this for you when you first go into it. But we can see that instead of a perfect circle, we now have those really hard edges. And it looks very blocked off, which is what we want. So I'm going to take my pencil tool. And using my bracket keys, which allows me to uh, increase or decrease my brush size. So again, the brackets are right to the bottom left of your delete key. We want to shrink this until it gets to be the size of basically one pixel, which is what I have right here on the screen. Now, it should be default set this way, but just make sure that your pencil tool is set to normal for the mode and that the opacity is set to 100%. And now if we start painting, you can actually paint pixel by pixel and it retains that perfect square, that kind of blockiness that you want in pixel art. Again, that's by using the pencil tool. Now, for whatever reason, if you see some extra lines in here, like if you notice our boxes here are you know individual one pixel sizes, but I've got these extra lines that are kind of chopping it up even more. I don't want those, so I'm gonna go back up to Photoshop Preferences and into my Guides, Grid, and Slices and set my subdivisions to one. 
That may have been set by default on your own computers already, so you may not need to worry about that. But as soon as I pick that, this is what I want to see. I'm only seeing those individual pixel boxes. All right. So now it's as easy as just clicking and painting. And basically, this is kind of the way that pixel art is created. It's a lot of switching between different colors that you have in your swatches panel. All right. And then painting over here in your canvas. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video and kind of create a quick little character using some of the colors that I have selected and also um, just by using that pencil tool. And then we'll take a look at how to erase parts of the character and we're going to get into some other tricks as well. All right, so using some of the colors I had selected earlier, I whipped up a very quick, slightly questionable um, octopus. And uh, I can see over here my layer panel, my layer one thumbnail, there is my octopus. And of course, the great thing about um, you know drawing or painting on a separate layer is using the move tool up at the top. If you need to, you can now move that octopus all the way around. And if you wanted to, for example, you know, create another character or something else to go along with it, you can simply make another layer and then kind of repeat that process. And you can move those two things separately from one another. So once you start creating, you know, at first that pixel grid might be nice to look at, but it can actually be a little bit distracting once you start getting some paint on your canvas. So there's a keyboard shortcut, just command apostrophe. And what that does is it'll actually turn that uh, grid off. All right, command apostrophe. Or you can always also go up to view at the top and then turn off the extras or simply deselect right here where it says grid if you want to go ahead and uh, just turn that off. So I'm going to turn it off just temporarily. There we go. You can kind of see the octopus. We got some eyes, we got some uh, spots on the head. And uh, I totally, I think I'm missing about two tentacles. Oh well. But he's kind of cute in a uh, retro Atari sort of way. Now, I would recommend if you're thinking about creating some sort of larger scene that involves, you know, a background and multiple characters or anything like that, um, I typically like to do those in separate documents. So I'll basically do one Photoshop file like we just did per character. And then in just a second, I'm going to show you how to import those and uh, resize them correctly so that they basically look exactly like this. So let's say that you make some pixel art that you want to share with the world. Um, the problem is at the moment, if I select my zoom tool, right, then I right click on my canvas and select the option 100%, which is basically going to show me the actual size of whatever it is I'm working on. I could see that not only is it, uh, you know, just comically small, but we lose a lot of that blockiness that really gives pixel art its unique look. So the part that's a little bit tricky when it comes to resizing pixel art, it's not necessarily tricky, but there is a, um, you know, something very specific or specific that you need to do when you're resizing it is that if I try to, for example, we go up to image, image size, you know, and this is how you would normally, uh, just one of many ways that you would enlarge this. If I change it from, let's see, at the moment, we're only 50 pixels by 50 pixels. Let's say that we want to bring this up to something larger, like a thousand by a thousand pixels. You can see as soon as we do that, um, it tends, obviously, it looks like uh, complete garbage. It looks totally blurry and nothing like what we want. So whenever you're resizing or working with pixel art and you need to enlarge or shrink something, what you always want to make sure that you have selected is an option right here at the bottom where it says resample. It should always be set to nearest neighbor hard edges. And what that's going to do is it's going to enlarge the picture, but it's going to keep that kind of blockiness that we want. So if I change this now to 1,000 pixels by 1,000 pixels, which could you know, potentially be a pretty good size just to upload it to the internet or share it online, and then I click OK, there we go. It looks exactly the way we want it. All those hard edges have been preserved. And if I right click and set it to 100%, this is the actual size of this. So again, this is a good size to upload to the internet or something like that. Upload, of course, you would just go up to File, Save As, and then make sure to, you know, obviously save the Photoshop document if you ever want to go back in and make any changes, because that's always going to be your working file. But if you wanted to upload it, you just simply select JPEG, rename it to whatever you want, and then click Save. So what I want to show you how to do next is how to take uh, your individual characters, because like I said, it's usually a good idea to actually make each character in its own Photoshop file, and just how to bring those into another document, such as, let's say you wanted to get into trying to do some animating, which of course is a whole other tutorial video in itself. But if I want to bring this character into something else, 
in another project that has some other characters or something like that. How can I do that? So it's actually pretty easy. I'm going to go up to File, New. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a canvas that's the exact size um, for a 720p or kind of like a standard HD video. Now it's not quite as high resolution as 1080p, but it's pretty good for most online videos. I'm going to set the pixels, the width to 1280. I'm going to set the height to 720, and then I'm going to click OK. Now when you're in full screen mode, uh, it's actually, it might appear as though our other project has disappeared, but if we hit the F key two more times, it's going to cycle back into uh, this screen mode, and I can see that I actually have two tabs up here at the top. So what I want to do is I want to bring this character that I've created here, and I want to bring it into this larger project right here. And again, this would be if I wanted to just make a larger scene with multiple characters and a background or anything like that. To do that, simply make sure that you have the right layer selected, which is in this case layer one. And you click with the move tool and you drag it up to the top to this other tab. Now I'm still holding the mouse down and I'm bringing that mouse back down and I'm releasing it right on top of my canvas. All right. Now this actually isn't so bad because just a second ago, um, we had resized our character, but let me just show you what would happen if that was not the case. I'm going to go ahead and re-shrink this. I'm going to click and drag and do exactly the same thing. And I can see <laughs> I've got the octopus right here, but he's way too small. Now, the way that we did it a second ago is we changed the entire canvas size to enlarge it. But if you're creating some sort of composite image like this with multiple layers or multiple characters, that's not something you want to do. You're going to be enlarging or actually shrinking them on an individual basis. So if I wanted to make this octopus larger, but inside this uh, pre-sized movie frame, I would do Command T to get into free transform. And kind of like we did a second ago, right up here where it says uh, interpolation, you want to make sure again that that says nearest neighbor. That's going to preserve those hard edges. And now if I hold shift, and use the corners, I can change the size of my character just like that. And it's going to keep it looking nice and blocky just like the way we want it. So if I wanted to make a larger graphic here, I could simply make a new layer and start putting in a background. Let me just make sure that it's underneath layer one, which is the character. And then you can keep making new layers and painting uh, new characters on each one. Now let's talk about erasing. Again, this is going to be really quick and painless. Uh, it's very similar to what we just did with the paintbrush, or sorry, with the pencil tool. To erase, use the eraser tool. Now, normally in Photoshop you use layer masking, but I actually like to, I prefer to use just the original uh, regular kind of eraser. To erase, I'm going to zoom in here on the original character. I'm going to hit the command apostrophe to bring my grid back. Now with the eraser, really straightforward, you just want to make sure that the mode is set to pencil up here at the top. Again, that's going to keep the eraser nice and blocky like we want it. And if you ever make a mistake, you can actually just erase just like that. All right. So if you, you know, you're painting or you're using your pencil and you make a little mistake, maybe you put one extra pixel in there, you can either obviously undo it or you can switch over to the eraser, set the pencil mode, and erase. And that's it. That's how you make uh, pixel art in Photoshop. Now obviously you can do some more, uh, you know, kind of more complicated uh, pixel art drawings simply by starting with a canvas that has a higher pixel count. And to show you what I'm talking about, uh, here's an example of what that kind of stuff looks like. But if you're looking to make some pixel art that looks a little bit more like sword and sorcery or something you would see on Atari, this is exactly how you do it. So hopefully this video helped you out. And if you make any pixel art, feel free to share below in the comment section. And um, if you also have some other you know, techniques or things that you like to do in terms of creating pixel art, share those as well. Um, again, this is Nick from Cassell Graphic Design. Go ahead and check out my website. It's CasselGraphicDesign.com for some work and also a lot of other tutorial videos. And uh, thanks for watching.